Praise God. Okay. Amen. We encouraged. We prayed. We heard praise and worship. Wow. I think we're doing good. All right. So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for this day. We ask you to establish our life in your peace right now. Quiet our soul, open up our minds and heart, and let us receive your word in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people, give me an amen and a wonderful applause for the Lord. That's how we worship God, we give him applause. Amen. And then Daniel, I need you to be so kind to go to Genesis chapter 25. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25. In Genesis 25, <clears throat> verse 29, Genesis 25, verse 29. We're going to read about a, a gentleman named Esau. Esau was related to Jacob. And this gentleman named Esau came in from the field one day and he was weary. Weary means hungry. He was out hunting all day long. And he was hungry. And his brother Jacob was cooking a stew, a soup. And Esau asked him for some soup. And Jacob said, I'm not giving you no soup. Go to verse 30, please. And then Esau turned around and told his younger brother Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew. For I'm weary, I'm hungry. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Go to verse 31, please. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. Now I want you to know that word Jacob means trickster, hustler. Jacob was hustling his brother. He said, you want some soup? Then give me what you got. You know that nice sweater you got? Let me wear it. Give it to me and I'll give you something to eat. Verse 32, please. And Esau said, look, I'm about to die. In other words, I'm starving. So what is the birthright to me? Right now, I don't care about no birthright. I want some of that soup. So I'll do whatever I need to do to get that, get that soup. Verse 33, please. Then Jacob said, swear to me of this day. So he swore to him and he said, his birthright to, ja to Jacob. He sold his birthright to Jacob. Verse 34. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank and arose and went his own way. Thus Esau despised his own birthright. In other words, Esau traded his destiny for fleeting pleasure. He was hungry. Feed my belly right now. And if you think about life, some of us are like that right now. We'll maximize that credit card and we won't think twice because I need it now. I want it now. Now, when Esau gave up his birthright, he actually sold it. He gave it up. So some of us are spending, spending in the present our future. Did you hear that? Some of us are spending, and it's okay because God is giving this message for a reason. He's going to help us get things in order. Say, I receive. So whatever is wrong has to be brought to the light and we need to face it, we need to fix it, and then we need to forget it. Write those three words down, face it. Fix it. 
and then forget it. Can't be thinking about that thing all day long. Now, by Esau selling his birthright, it included material benefits. Think about what I'm saying. And family privileges. So decisions, because that was a decision he made, can affect us. Your decision can affect you and your future. Your decision can affect right now your surrounding. Esau sold his birthright for a, a cup of soup. <laughs> he gave up his material, he gave up his benefits. And he gave up his family privileges. You, know, you need to hear what the Lord is saying. And hear what the Lord is saying. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. And if you fall asleep, what's going to happen is, this will continue happening in your life. Amen. Here we go. He sold his birthright. He gave up his material benefits. He gave up his family privileges. Here comes the third one. He, ate, he even gave up spiritual blessings. And you might say, well, a soup? He gave up all that for a soup? Yeah, Jacob the trickster, which in the, in the future become Israel. Israel is his spiritual name. See, God changed his name from trickster to Israel, a spiritual name. But at the time, Jacob was uh, hustling. And Jacob will do anything and anything to bring what? Benefit to him. See? And he tricked his brother into giving up material benefits, family privileges, and spiritual blessing. The scripture tells us up there that he ate and drank, listen to that, and rose up and went on his own way. In other words, what he did, it didn't bother him. He didn't put mind to it because it benefited him at the moment. And some of us, we do that unconsciously. We do whatever we need to do without thinking about who this thing is going to affect. Is it going to affect my family? Is it going to, is it going to affect me right now? Is it going to affect me in the future? So there's something we need to do. We need to learn from Esau. And by the way, the title of today is Your Decision Matters to God. So we got to learn how to make correct decisions. We need some wise counseling. We need to stop making decisions on impulse like Esau did. I'm hungry. I know this is my gas money. I know this is my rent money. But I want those shoes. Oh, I, <laughs> I've been there. I want that watch. <laughs> I want it. And the watch tells me, you know you're right. <laughs> watch is talking to me, romancing me. <laughs> The Bible tells us he ate and drank. Listen to that. You got to listen to that. It's right there. He ate and drank. As long as I get what I want, I don't care for the consequences. He didn't give a second thought to what he has done. He just got up, ate first, satisfied his stomach, and moved on, and moved on. If you're taking notes, write this down. Decision-making begins by discerning the will of God. Bless your heart. Decision-making, because we all have to deal with that, decision-making. Decision-making begins by discerning the will of God. Is this the will of God? For me to do this. And I have news for you. 
Patty, God delights in revealing his will to us. In fact, he, he left us a book called the Bible. It's filled with his will. Now, we need to make a decision. Here we go again. See, Michelle, everything is about decisions, and we don't even realize it. We need to become eager to follow his precepts. His precept, his law, his advice, his counseling. I need to stop leaning on my own understanding and start acknowledging something that has been around a lot longer than I have. We almost have to have the attitude that his son Jesus had towards decision. So if we look at how Jesus used to make a decision, it was very simple in a way. He makes it look simple, but in the flesh, see the flesh? It's hard for us. So in Daniel, Luke 22, verse 42. Luke 22, chapter 22, verse 42. See, in Luke 22, 42, thank you. Jesus said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Take away from me what I'm going through right now, how I'm feeling, this anxiety, this worry. I, I got to take care of this situation. I, I don't know if I can do this. This is, this is what your fear starts. Your fear talks to you. Your fear wants to touch false evidence that appear real. Your fear does not want you to... Get up and face life. It wants you to fall down and stay down. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to know something. All things work together for good. Praise the Lord. Jennifer, grace is teaching you patience. Either you like it or not. And also perseverance. Either you like it or not. And because of grace, praise the Lord, Jennifer is going to have a better tomorrow. Her and Daniel and Caleb and the family in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen so it can happen for them. So it's, it's something that we just, what's happening right now, it's not that important. What is going to happen is more important than what's happening right now. Amen? So we have to be, we have to be able to see further than just what's happening right now. I'm working this. Somebody say, I'm working this. I'm working this. Oh, yeah, I'm working this. I, I'm pounding the rock every day. Praise the Lord. See? Somebody say, the worm has turned. The worm has turned. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So let's do it. Let's go forward. Your will... Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, my will, not my will, not what I want, but your be doing. Let's, I want to do what you want me to do. So as, if you haven't written it, write it yet, decision making, say decision making. Decision. Write this down. Decision making begins by discerning the will of God. Jesus knew the will of God. Because the will of God is the best for you. See, Daniel, he, he just wants you to have the best and nothing but the best. But because of distraction, because of what we go through, see, we can't see that. Just like Esau couldn't see that he was being set up by his brother to get his what? His material things. And what else? Family privileges. And what else? And spiritual blessing. Think about that. That's, that's the nutshell right there. Material. We all need material things. We all need a place to stay. We all need clothes. 
Please, some of us need clothes more than others. We need to put clothes. We need to put clothes on. Okay? So we need clothes. We, and we need the spiritual blessings. That brings us to a place of sound mind. Amen. I, ironic, but it's not ironic. In Matthew chapter 6, go to Matthew 6, please. Verse 10, thank you. Matthew 6, 10. Dr. Luke said this, wrote it down. Jesus said it, excuse me. In Matthew 6, 10, Jesus worded it a little differently. How did he put it? Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So decision making begins by discerning the will of God. Now, God will teach us how to be a good decision maker. And he has two ways, he has many ways, but two ways I want to iterate a little bit right now with us is how he does it, how he teaches us. One of the ways he teaches us how to make right decision, Michelle, is through his spirit. He uses the Holy Spirit to teach us, Reverend George. And see, Daniel, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And I need all of you to understand that. He's incapable of lying. He can't lie. I mean, he's got it going on. That's your counselor. I need every one of us to get hooked up and connected with him. Say that with me. I'm going to get hooked up and I'm going to get connected with him. Mm. So, Daniel, we go to John 16, verse 13. We'll understand this even more and further. John 16, 13. Yes, 16, 13. John 16, 13. We're almost done. I'm going to let you go. And we'll continue this. I want to thank you all for honoring the Lord and being here today, being in your position. And I pray that you receive, that you will retain, and you'll be able to release. Praise God. You know, you, you, your life is changing. You'll never be broken on the day of your life. Praise the Lord. Let, let, let him take you to a higher consciousness and awareness, which is his word. When they talk about high consciousness and awareness, people talk about that like they're eating a chip, a potato chip. You know, we gotta get, no, it's his word. His word been around for a long time. And then John 16, 13, which we're there, thank you, Daniel, says, however, when he, who is he? The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you. He will guide me and you into all truth. You see it? You see it? You see it? All truth. Who? The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. So if we talk to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit teach us. Who's the Holy Spirit? That voice inside of you. See? We make it look so, you know, weird. Ooh, Holy Spirit. Ooh, ah. It's that voice. Remember what I told you? What, what the actor and producer and writer said? He said he used to talk to himself. And he thought sometimes he was crazy. And he said, well, as long as I... And sometimes I even answer myself, he said. But it wasn't him. It was the Holy Spirit inside him. It was God. Now he serves the Lord. He says, I, and when you see him, he's like 76 years old. And his body is diesel. All right? And, 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 and you see him, he's very plain Jane. You don't see like the other people, you know, flashing. He's plain. He got it, believe me. He's in every movie on Netflix. He's in every, you know. But see, once again, he met his maker. He looked within and heard his voice. Praise the Lord. So if we go to the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth has come and he will guide us into the truth. He will not speak. That's the first thing you know is original. When people are speaking about themselves, guess what? Mm. Mm. 
You're not my Savior. He will guide you, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Now, that's what you need to be doing. You need to be hearing. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Hear what he's saying inside of you. And then you need to hear and do. You need to hear. I wish you'd write that. You need to hear. I'm getting you free. He's using me to get you free. And when I say I, it's because he's using my voice. But it ain't I. I, I got to follow what he's telling me too. So, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. So why are you so worried? You see that? Everybody sees that? Things to come. Why are you so worried when you can go inside of you and hear? And that voice will tell you, you'll be all right. You're not by yourself. This too shall pass. This is not eternal. I'm eternal. I'm just sharpening your pencil. You've been a little bit blunt lately. And you haven't been writing right. You don't like your script, Daniel? Then change it. That's what he's saying. I've given you the authority to write. I put a thong, t- tongue in your mouth. That you can speak and write with your words. I will not fail. I will succeed. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm writing. I'm writing in the canvas of heaven. I'm speaking faith, praise God. Well, I don't know. I I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You writing too. (laughs) Foolish words. And the angels and and the Holy Spirit and God, man, we don't want to see that. That's not our writing. That's his writing. And he's laughing. (laughs) I'll keep fearing her. I'll keep fearing him. I'll keep doubting him. I'll keep doubting her. (laughs) They'll be lost than lost. And he does it because he wants to hurt our father. Because our father has put a substance inside of us. Greatness in us. You can do it, man. What do you imagine yourself? There's three things that you have to be careful. Let me tell you the first one. Three things you've got to be careful. The thoughts you think, write it down. The thoughts you think. What are the thoughts that I'm thinking? If your thoughts ain't right, you better change them. The thoughts you think, the image you vision, the imagination, the thoughts that you think has to be right. Because these thoughts will control your life. Reverend George, if your thoughts are not lining up with the will of God, they will control your life. And you'll never be able to move from where you're at. Everybody hear that? If you hear that, give me an amen. You have greatness inside of you. You can do it. Someone has to tell you. No, 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 no. You're not ordinary. You're extraordinary. Let the extraordinary come out. You keep hugging at ordinary things. You keep, I want, I want a fellowship with ordinary. No, man. That's not even humble. God called you to be extraordinary. And he wants you to do extraordinary things in a well way. Say, all is well in a well way. All is well in a well way. What is well? It's well. Amen. All right. You know who she married to. (laughs) And this, Patty, is a way of you controlling your emotion. Write it down. How I think. How I visualize. Oh, let me give you number three. And the action I take. Thoughts, visualization, and action. Daniel, it sounds like me decision making, doesn't it? 
But my, 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 my brains are scrambled. Then let's unscramble it. Let's put that bad boy sign the shite up. <laughs> Aren't you tired of being beat up? Aren't you tired of feeling down and out? Aren't you tired of feeling like you ain't got no God? Something's wrong here. We got to change this thing. We got to change this thing right now. Your thoughts, your image, and your actions. Your thought, your image, and your action. What you imagine you are, that's what you'll become. I'm so ugly. Look at the way I look. I look like a donkey's rear end. Really? Then what you, listen, listen, listen. What you feel you are, everybody else is going to see you like that. Because you're projecting that. And then if, if, when you're walking down the street, somebody goes, oh, 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 don't wonder why. You've been saying it. No, you know, and these are practical fundamentals. Did I say that right, Patty? Fundamentals. You know, this is what you teach in school, you know. You know, this is practical fundamental. We got to do this, you know. So you need, to do, you need to do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Write it down. Doing ordinary thing in an extraordinary way. Okay? This is the way I do it. Extraordinary. Why? Who are you? It's not who am I. It's who is he. He is I am. Say I am three times. I am. I am. And I am. Amen. So now, let's go back to John 6, 16, 13. You have to hear his authority. His authority will build you up. Allow him to guide you. Allow him to tell you the truth and give you authority that will help you here on earth. And he'll tell you what to come. And if you follow this will, you'll be okay. You will be established in life. Praise the Lord. And that, that's the whole thing right there. Okay? Remember, uh, I, I taught this a while back. You, you got to learn the power of pause. The power of pause is very, very important, uh, Michelle, uh, Sister Smith, the power of pause, because it allows you to make right decisions, Reverend. If you're too, you know, too fast, on the, man, you're going to mess it up. See, too fast. So practice, write this down. Practice the pause. You know, something get on, on your nerve, just stop. Look, look what, this on he taught me. I look at the person. Now, I don't look at the person aggressively so much that that person thinks I'm trying to pick a fight. But I look at the person. Person's looking at me. Now you're getting uncomfortable the way I'm looking at you. And do what I do. I move to the right. Look at you again, and now you're upset because the way I looked at you before. Now I look, watch, I look it to the left. But I never look down. You hear that, Daniel? Never look down. When you look down, that's a defeated attitude. You're, 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 you're turning on fear. When there's a prey after you to tear you up and, and you submit, guess what it's going to do to you? going to tear you up, man. So you look at it, look to the right, go back, look at it again, look to the left, and say, perhaps we can discuss this more later on. It is not you, it is me. Walk away. Walk away. Avoid doing, avoid doing and saying things that later you will regret. Don't stand there, because that, that energy wants you to speak. I will kick you right in there. That's what it wants. And then now, you took power away from them. And really what you're doing is the conversation, the exchange. Man, I know this by experience, son. It's gone out the window. Now you got two dummies fighting together. You are smarter than that. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I'm smarter than that. I'm smarter than that. 
Learn to pause before you become de 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 defensive. You hear that? Don't become defensive. Is this helping somebody? Don't become defensive. Enjoy where you are. Enjoy where you are. I like the way Michael says it. Michael says, enjoy yourself with me. Come on, enjoy yourself. Oh, Pastor, you, you, man, I told you I'm not religious. You want religion? Go get it. Jesus dealt with, with the Pharisee all day long. <laughs> Put him in their place. He's a man of God. Look who he's hanging out with. Well, you ain't sick. You claim you're not sick, so, you know. We got to emerge ourselves into a learning process. What works for you don't work for me. And what works for me, you don't have to accept it. My life is not your life. You wait. When you stand before him for me, then maybe I'll consider this. Can I teach it like I feel it? Praise the Lord. See? Focus on your own business. Don't focus on other people's business. Come on now, I feel him. And that's the problem with the world, son. Everybody looking at everybody else because they don't want to see their own fall. But when you know where you at, you can let them say whatever they want about you. Hello. Your opinion is not my reality. You don't have to hear me. You don't have to talk to me. But I have one who is my friend. Who hears me when I'm doing good and hears me when I'm doing bad. Find a way. Find a way. Look right here. Find a way. And self will correct self. I am is inside of you. Don't try to explain to everybody what you're learning. They're not in your level. And sometimes they have different devils. I ain't got time for you. If you want to be a good decision maker and you want to have success in your life, you have to learn the skill. If you don't train your skill, your skill ain't going nowhere. And life is a skill. Well, we're going to close up and then. One of the things that we do not do right in decision making, we don't want to learn and maintain ourselves in a way that we can become a leader for others and visionary for others. When I look at my life, I believe the first visionary and leader was my father, my natural father. See, he lived what he, what he said. And he would take out that wallet, always had cash in it. He said, you don't see me asking the neighbor for $5. If anything, the neighbor come to me and ask me for 5 or 10 And I give to them when my eyes close because I'm doing it for you. I said, well, why don't you give me the $10? You go to work. <laughs> so you got to learn the skill. You got to learn what works for you. You got to get the facts. You got to get the information. Amen? Yeah. You're more than a vendor. Anybody understand that? You're more than a vendor. And you're not in competition with anybody. And life will give you courses of lessons. And blessed are those that can hear and receive so they can improve themselves. And the word of God will improve you and me. Well, you've been so kind and so gracious. Look, I'm on the clock. All right. Hello, viewers. We thank you so much. We'll see you real soon. God bless you. Let's get God in one.